The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician Sour, 877-927-6648. There's a lot to discuss. Let me do this. I just did the update, so I'm going to just follow up a little bit more on each uh, index. Look, the Dow in a leg F to the downside in the daily chart. The MACD is very negative. The stochastic is trying to flatten out at 13%. The on-balance volume is really close to some kind of a reversal to the upside. This is the area where I'm anticipating there's going to be a bounce. I'm calling it a bounce, and I suspect it's going to be longer and a little bit uh, perhaps stronger than the bounce that occurred right here on the 14th and the 13th of May at 24.938 was the low. Mm, wrong one. 25222. That's right. This is the low of the 25222. And what we were looking at is a rally that went to 25,952. That's a, that's a 700 point move. I'm suspecting that we're in, we're very close to a move that has, I just don't know about the price point because you have resistance at 25,226. So you're back to the starting point on the, on the 13th, 14th of May. And then you've got the 14 period moving average, the thick black line right there, 25,394. I'm suspecting that I need to see either today that there's a failure to rally and then somehow or other we go down tomorrow, maybe even maybe even into Wednesday as a stochastic. I would have loved to have seen the stochastic down at 7% or 8% today, single digits, and then we can start the rally. That's what I've been anticipating for subscribers. We're kind of anticipating that the bounce is, is going to come. And at the same time, what I am looking at is the overall negative picture for the Dow let me just do this at the same time. The S&P, look at the daily chart of the S&P, very negative. MACD is at, uh, MACD is very strongly down. Stochastic, though, is at 9%. There's your single digit, and it is flattening out. But at the same time, look at the weekly chart. That is a serious decline. I said to subscribers, everything about what we saw in the doji candles of the down, the S&P, some of the other indices as well, from the high that was made um, late April, early May, so what I would have said this is exactly what I'd be looking at as a peak D, except for the one thing that was a Chapman wave squash pattern that suggests that, the, uh, that there's a powerful move to the upside. The talk of the stochastic of the weekly chart carries it very high. It can go to a leg A and then a quick B, and then it can even go to a C. When the stochastic starts to pull back, the MACD's fast-moving average, the nine-period differential, the green line, should carry it on to D. That's where it hands like a baton is handed over in a relay race to the next runner. So you're handing the torque to the momentum. But this decline, everything about, look at this pullback that we've seen in the weekly chart. Let me go back to the Dow. I'm going to mix things up because they're all related, but related in a slightly different way. Look, the Dow is a little bit deeper, but it's also two doji candles at the high, 26,695, the week of the 26th week of the 20, uh, 19th and then the 26th. And now we're trying to form this is a couple of hours into the first uh, bar of this week. So we can't talk about that as a doji candle. Although it wouldn't be, wouldn't it be surprising if on Friday we actually close within a few points of where we are now. And that would be a doji candle. Anyway, what we're looking at is the technicals are very weak. Look at the QQQ, NDX 100 trading vehicle, even deeper from a peak C. And even there, it has all the look with the MACD crossing negative stochastic now at 42% in the weekly chart. Now, the daily is a very ugly red candle. That's what's hindering the market right now from a nice turn to the upside. So this we can call, this is now new leg D to the downside. So it went trough A, trough B, trough C, trough D from the high of 191.32 on the 28th of April, rallies to an A minus, and then it has a gray A, then it has uh, a blue E slash B, F slash C. You don't have to go G slash D because a D is where you get, this is the target always of a D, the fourth lowest peak and the fourth highest peak. So now you're at a D. This is where 
Other things should happen. The stochastic is flat at 7%. I don't like flat. I want V-shaped bottoms. When it's flat, it means it could run in. It's going to have to come back to retest to really create the kind of upside torque and momentum that's needed. So let's just keep going here. The monthly charts, I'll talk about them. Maybe tomorrow I'll talk about the monthly charts. There's nothing, we've just started a new month. Nothing much to talk about here other than the very, very ugly candle in all the, all the different indices for May. And look at the IWM. IWM keeps trying, struggling to find a base, and then it gaps down, struggles to find a base. Look, it's every single two, three days it gaps down. Again, today, NACD is very ugly, but the stochastic is at 8%. The on-balance volume in all cases is trying to turn up today, but the stochastic at 8% is not good. And this big arch formation in the weekly says that the IWM, to become a leader, it's going to really have to show some good relative strength over the next week or two um, and try to get from 145.92, where it is right now, into the 151s. That's going to really going to be a challenge. And that week monthly chart is not very good. Now, this is what I wanted to talk about. Gold up uh, $14, 14.3 right now, 1324, 1325.3. In on XC in the daily, I drawn this the other day. I can't remember if I showed this to subscribers, but there's a left side, right side price time match, which it beat in, within three days. And look at this action right here in leg C. Uh, that, I, this is good action. This is really good action. But to, to be superb action would have to be a sustained move above 1336. That's the high of the 25th of March. And at the same time, what it really needs to do is to see, look here, here's the weekly chart. And this is going to be very important. This weekly chart needs to, whatever happens throughout the week, is going to be important for gold. Why? Because if gold is able to sustain the weekly move above the 1319 200-period orange, this orange line, the exponential moving average, 200-weekly uh, moving average, and then the MACD finally crosses positive again. Oh, it hasn't done that since it crossed negative back in uh, end of March. So this is going to be very important for gold. Now, is this the big move in gold? To tell you the truth, I did a lot of work over the weekend, uh, just in, in all areas. But the most important area that I was looking at was very long term. And as it stands right now, I discussed this on Friday and mentioned that I was thinking that gold at this particular point could be representing the geopolitical conflagration that's going on right now. It isn't world war or anything, but it is tariff war. It is verbal war. Uh, it's not very pleasant. Uh, we have a president right now in London, and um, there are a quarter of a million or more people out there protesting. He may as well be uh, in New York or Washington or something like that. Yeah, um, this, is, uh, yeah this is what's going on. We don't know whether this whole thing with tariffs is going to work out to the betterment of the United States. Uh, there, are, there are signs that some areas are already benefiting. There are signs that say... You know, this is an unknown unknown. Not only is it an unknown unknown, it's an unknown unknown about an unknown. So we, we, you know, we just don't know. Market-wise, is this going to deter, is this going to detract from the positives of the jobless rate coming down, more jobs and all that? In some areas, yes, but I suspect that we might, uh, we might have a little surprise in the, in the next couple of months. So we've got to, got to be careful. So gold, I'm called talking about it as a geopolitical phenomenon. I'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website, you can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, so we're looking at gold. These two uh, sessions, this is Friday session, Sunday night into today. Uh, this, these are really good, strong candles. The MACD is uh, uh, confirming it. The stochastic is sharp. Now, my biggest concern on Friday was that a rally like this, very often the speed with which it goes up with the MACD and stochastic and the price, if there is a pullback, and in this case, if it takes out the low of today, 12, uh, 13, 10 point nine, let's call it uh, 13, uh, let's call it 13, 10. If it closes under 13 within maybe two days, that would say it was a false move to the upside. If it holds steady and doesn't even pull back lower than 13, 18, and then it actually makes a new recovery high. That says to me that, that the dollar finally have, I'll show you something interesting here. Look, the dollar finally could have a little bit more of a breather. It's still looking very strong to me in all time frames. Uh, sorry, in the, uh, the weekly and monthly time frames. But the shorter term says that there's a good chance that at 97.57 right now, uh, if it starts to take out 97.20 to 97 support, in the next couple of days, gold is going to go quite a bit high. Now, look at this USD JPY, which is the yen. Look at that move to the downside. That's an arch formation in the weekly chart, arch formation in the monthly chart. It did finally make that peak D, and then it just kind of fizzled from there. So I'm looking at the yen, and I'm, I'm asking myself, uh, if you were looking at the different currencies, in what category would you put uh, the intermediate term yen picture? And that says to me, intermediate term, it is still um, from that peak D, it's in a sell mode in the weekly chart. The monthly chart is still basically struggling to get out of its uh, uh, sell signal format. And uh, this is going to be very important what happens over the coming days. Look at the USD JPY. This is the, Euro, this is the uh, uh, sorry, the euro dollar currency pair. But what happened to that? EUR, EUR, USD. I just typed the wrong thing. Uh, look at that. That's a nice green candle. If you look at the weekly chart, hey, uh, we've seen this before, just alternating between green and red, between the trading range of 1.23 and 1.111 or 1.10. And that monthly chart is still terrible. So a lot has to happen. Look at this big, big down channel. Look at that. Whoops, wrong one. Look at this. Yeah, there we go. Down channel coming up. Look at that. 
It's just in the lower range. It's hitting the 50-period exponential moving average, but it has got a rising W formation in the stochastic and the MACD. And that says if the, yeah, if the euro starts to trade above the candle high of the 19th of May, and that would be at 1.12635, that's going to be good action. So I'm watching this pretty closely. Uh, if you look at silver, silver at this particular stage is has broken. Oh, finally, it broke this very long-term mini down channel. Today is, is nicely above it. So you finally got silver acting well. It's up 1.15%, up 0. 0.16 at 1473. I forgot to look at the percentage of gold. Gold is up 1 1.09, 1.10%, 1.1%. Very nice. So this is this is something to take uh, seriously because if you look at my AS, not my, it's the, the, the stock that I always look at when I'm looking at gold, ASA, what a nice breakout this is. Is it a brand new A? Is it an old F? Mm, the way it's acting right now, this looks like it could be a breakout, but let's just give it a couple of days to see where it's trading at. 10.18 right now, 28.28, uh, up 2.87%. Hey. Good move. All right, let's go to platinum is not participating. It wasn't. Now it's starting to participate. Uh, it was acting very poorly on Friday. Boom, suddenly it's up 3.35%, up 26 at 820.80. So finally you've got the you've got the metals. Now let's look at our wheat. Thus wheat is trading in leg C. It's up nine and a quarter at 512 and an eighth. Let's look at soybean. Soybean is down. Oh, it was down. Now it's unchanged. At uh, 870, 878 is up an eighth. Very nice. It heard me. <laughs> and now let's look at corn. Uh, corny corn. Corn is pulling back. It's down five and a half at 421 uh, and a half. But it's had a spectacular move from 343 up to the 430. Was that five? Fourth. Uh, oops. 438 level. Uh, so it's now at 421 and three quarters. So it's done very nicely. Okay, so we've done a bunch of those things. I need just to do high-grade copper, which was down earlier. Now it's up a little bit, up 0 0.009. Yeah, not bad. Uh, it's just trying to find um, some kind of a bottom here, but it hasn't done very much. It's just been going down, down, down. So here we go. A couple of questions. Crude oil, yes, I'm looking at crude oil. Then those questions that came in at the, in the den, et cetera. Crude oil is just about unchanged at 0.10 down, 10 cents down at 53.40. Uh, this doji candle better be some kind of a reversal candle. Otherwise, that's a real problem, having gone to a low of 52.11 this morning with a high of 54.63. So crude oil is an issue. Remember, I spoke about it in terms of that relationship that I'm looking at in terms of copper, weak copper, weak oil, and the Dow itself down with the transports. Those four together are not such a good sign with wood. I didn't show my subscribers over the weekend, but it's trying to bounce now. It had a terrible arch formation that took out the left side low 5506 from December of last year and it's trying to bounce down to 5527 up just 27 cents XLF what was a lot to do here XLF trading um, trying to rally today it's only up 0.02 at 2603 this is going to be important see this trend line right here it's holding it and it needs to hold it and it needs to start to rally this week there's not too much of the downside left in terms of support uh, 26.03 <laughs> Let's watch this closely. Below 25, it's a real problem. Now, I, a couple of things I needed to do. Oh, uh, TLT, of course, the TLT, I should have started with that. TLT is up two cents. Remember what I was discussing last week? I said, watch the TLT because if money, if the, the stock market remains volatile, meaning going down, um, then money flows out of stocks and goes into the so safety of bonds. The high today is 132.18, trading at 131.85. Really nice move up. Little doji candle here it has to be washed. Could be a reversal candle. So tomorrow's action is going to be very important. Weekly chart shows a little. Well, can't even talk about the weekly chart, which started the new, the first day of the month uh, of the week. Oh, and the, and the first uh, real, uh, yeah, first day of the month as well, trading day that is. So that's the TLT. Huge move it had last week. Let's see if it's going to be a, a green candle this month or a red candle. That's going to be very important. I think I've done everything I want to do. Now I'll get to the first question I had was DY. AI, I think that was the question. Nope, the question was D A Y A T T Y I A. All right, all right, let me find out what the question was and I'll get right back 
D Y A I. <laughs> D Y A I. I guess I had it right, just didn't show up. Oh, there it is. Huge strong leg D. We were looking, talking about this the other day. Uh, the question in the den, and I can't remember. Did I say to hold off or to nibble on it? I can't remember what I said, but it was acting very well. Uh, very nice. Oh, and I said it should go to a leg D, right? And that's in now in leg D, and up 65 cents, up 14 and a half percent at five dollars and ten cents. So the question is, what do I do now? And the question is, I like it. I like it in the daily. I like it in the weekly. I like it in the monthly. Yes, yeah, in leg D, uh, in the monthly. But acting like this, and in this particular period, I, I'm going to say, start. You're a long-term investor, so start a little position here. 420, 435 to 415 is really very good support. Uh, it just did it in in a day. Just strike right through all the all the levels. That's the good support. So I'm just going to start your position. We'll follow it um, because it's acting very well. I'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're gonna love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Eighty-six point fifty, and I hear in the background the same thing that's going on. And I'm not sure if the got the uh, uh, the voice is uh, still going on there. I'm talking, so let's see what happens. Uh, most importantly, VNQ is just in the consolidation area. And if you look at the uh, weekly chart, you're looking at a D, a peak D. And I'm suggesting that if you're in the long position, just stay in the long position. I'm not sure if I would be adding right now. I think it's still going to come down and test the 85s. 
That's not a big deal. It's at 86.56. But if it takes it out, you've got to be ready for a test even of the 84 level. So that's going to be important. So um, let me just put this in there. Oops, it's not even typing. That means there's a problem. Uh, okay, yeah, good. So it's going on. And it's just there's some certain noises here that were the noises that suggest that maybe the sound <laughs> disappeared, but we're on. Okay, this is what I'm also looking at. Within the IYR, perhaps the same sector that, that was Vanguard Real Estate ETF, if you look at the IYR, also doing, it looks, I mean, IYVNQ are the, 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 pretty much the same thing, except that this is in a leg C, possibly a peak C this week. Uh, it's the same thing. I, I just think there's a, a period here where you've got to be a little careful uh, in the yield area. Let's just give me one more time. Let me just do this with the U.S., which is the uh, bonds itself, up a half a point at 154 and 630 seconds, leg D. Everything about this, even the short term, suggests that it could be a little bit toppy. Actually, let me do this. I'm going to go to my automated uh, notation, right, T TLT says that there should be a lot of resistance. It broke out, broke out. Went above the 129.66. So 134.97 is the monthly. That's all the is, is the monthly. Uh, 131.84 is the 10-minute. And actually, we're at 131.84 right now. So it's the candle that I'd be looking at. So I, I would not be surprised if yields are just about to have a bit of a breather. If they are going to have a bit of a breather, I think there'll be some money coming into the market. Look at, let me just go to this and I'll show you something that I think is not just interesting. This is something to keep in mind as being very important. Look at the U, look at the chart of UTX. Trying to rally today, it's up 31 cents at 126.61. It has plunged from the 144.40 um, all-time high that was made, and I love this. This is what I wanted to talk about. Thank goodness I came to this in, in another uh, another way. Over the weekend, as I was looking at so many charts, I was absolutely fascinated. You know how I always talk about how does the market know? The market can know horizontals because you remember if something hit 200 and then it dropped sharply from there, Fund managers remember that number, 200. If we drop down to 100 and then start to rally, they'll remember 100. What's really difficult in a channel is to remember that it's now gone from 20 to 25 to 30 to 35 to 40, making a straight line. That's resistance. That's a repellent line that I talk about. And then at the bottom, it's gone from 15 to uh, 20 to 25. So you've got a parallel channel. That is much harder to do. But what I have been fascinated is that monthly charts have gone, like like United Technologies trading at 126.55 right now, from 144.15 all-time high in September, plunges down to the 101, I think it was 101, 100.48 area in December. Let me just type that in so I don't have to keep guessing. 100. Point forty eight, and that was 12, 2018. And then what does it do? It rallies where? To 144.40. It makes a new all-time high by 25 cents, coming from 100 up 44%. It goes to 144.40. Isn't that incredible? And then it has the deepest correction that it's had since last October. Well, that's oh, sorry, October after the green candle high, all time high. It has another turnaround like that. How does, how do, I don't know. That's really quite remarkable that it should just stop dead then. So that's the Groucho Marx eyebrows. You remember the little arch I put over there, an arch above that high? And then it comes down, and usually it stops maybe 50% of the way, 30, 33% to maybe 50%. This is what it's done. So this is going to be very important. Can United Technologies actually get back on track under these tariff conditions, just terrible conditions? <laughs> we'll see. But this is getting interesting right now. So uh, that was that area. And then the question I had about XAL, XAL is the airline index with uh, cr crude oil coming down so sharply. You would say, oh, yeah, this really must have helped the airlines. Oh, sure, it helped the airlines, but it didn't help the airlines' price. The price is gone from the XAL back in the 104's double top just recently, uh, early May, to 95.11 right now. That's that's a that's you know that's a big drop. So um, no, it hasn't helped, and it hasn't helped. Let me look, show you the IYT. The IYT is the transportation index. 
uh, ETF. Uh, it's up 40 cents right now, 175, but it's gone from 200 down to this 174 level, uh, 175 level. Ooh, that's a big move. And look at the weekly chart. So there's a lot of work to be done to get a rally that is uh, that that is like December. I don't think we're going to get that for quite a while. Uh, that was there were a couple of things we were just so oversold, and that whole thing with the Fed. And let me tell you, it wasn't just the Fed; it was the fact that there was intense selling because the market had made highs in almost all the indices, not the New York Stock Exchange. Though, question I had about. Um, Stocks, well, I'll do the SMHs. So the semiconductors had a, a really sharp move from the all-time high of 120.71. I showed my subscribers this chart over the weekend. I hope I didn't cancel. Now I've got it right here. Look at this. This is November of 2018. The billing, the three-month average billing is down 5.3%. December of 2018 for the semiconductor industry, billing is down 12%. January. 2019, down a little bit more, minus 20%. February, minus 22%. March, minus 24%. April, minus 29%. I haven't got the May figures yet. I think they'll be coming out fairly soon. That's the reason why I kept saying that SMHs, the semiconductors, had gotten away from uh, themselves. They, it was just way either too much shorting or it was way optimistic. And it has screamed a 50% rally from 80 in December to 120 in April. That was just an aberration. One of the reasons why we, we were shorting, uh, we were early at times, but finally we got it right. We got that short at 160, in the 116, just four points off the all time high. And Still short, taking profits along the way. Haven't switched to the long side yet, but I think it was incumbent upon us to, to be taking profits, waiting for a bounce, and the big bounce will say, what happens if it hits 103 to 105? Can it continue? Or is, will May start to see a really good rebound in the billings? Well, Taiwan said they were down 50, I think thought they were down, they projected 15% lower in May. Big semiconductor a producer. This is going to be very interesting to see what happens. So we've been raising cash by raising stops or keeping tight stops and stocks that we would like for the longer term. But I'm not hanging around. I'm sorry. You take out our stop. We can get in again. I'm not going to hold anything that goes from a small 3% loss, maybe even 4%, but about 2 to 3 is really our max. And then hold it and you're sitting there with a 10% loss and you have to try to make that up. That's a lot. And a 15% loss, which could happen in a second in this kind of market, don't want it. Rather, rather miss an opportunity. I'll be back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, 
South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So it's a process. That's the way I always like to look at turnarounds in the market. Question I had is about the 300-minute uh, E-mini, uh, ESM-19, trading right now at 2,739.25, down 13. Uh, I've got this as an E. The person who asked me said they have it as a G. I don't, I, well, I, I, I considered that that bounce on the 17th of May towards that double top in the 24-94 area, that started and moved moved down. That's A, B, C, D, E. So we're probably not in disagreement. It's just the lettering, the way I've started it. Most importantly, what I want, wanted to show is you see the MACD's flat and the stochastic is at 11%, but there is nothing here as a trigger in the stochastic. I like these V-shaped patterns, the flatness. You remember when I when I talk about the, uh, I wonder if I can just find it on this chart. Yeah, when I'm talking about how positive it is when the stochastic is above 80%, especially when it's in the 90% area and flat, you can get prices that keep going higher. But when it's the opposite way around, this is the exact opposite. So for me to get a kind of a buy signal now that says, forget any shorts, just now you can start just buying. The, this 300-minute chart is saying, you know, it's a real struggle. It had an opportunity this morning. You could have gone from the 10% area right into the 15% area and been at the high of 2762 uh, with a green nine-period exponential moving averages. It hasn't done that. That's what I'm saying. It's going to, going to be a process of making a bottom but it's a bottom that so far is almost rotational that even within a sector, I'm seeing some stocks acting quite nicely and other stocks in the same sector acting very poorly. So this count that I'm looking at here is not even the count so much. It is the way you have to come out of this. You have to see the stochastic and price and MACD moving together in unison to the upside. You want a wide beta. You want a wide distance between the green line and the red line in the MACD as the price keeps moving with big leaps. I don't want this tiny little stuff. I can't remember offhand what the chart was. We made a PK and then a B and a C and a D. And that is tiny little range. I don't want small ranges. I want big legs to the upside. Haven't got that yet, but the process is in place to say, if I look at the daily chart of the E-mini, have a look at this. If you look at the daily chart, not there here. If I look at the ESM 119, still June, you can see that this doji candle potential, long-legged doji candle right here, the unbalanced volume, this blue line has spiraled to a low. The stochastic is still coming down. So I had 10%. I haven't had the turn. So it says the impact of a number of confluences coming together to be able to reverse the price and the technicals together is going to say that that MACD is so wide between the slow moving average red line and the green line, 
it's a process, and I don't think you're going to get anything but a big bounce. And if it even gets close, the MACD gets close to crossing positive, I think that's when it's going to deflect and come back down again. So I'm seeing this as a potential for a bounce, but I'm only calling it a bounce and then a retest. The 300 minute would be the trigger together with the 120 minute chart. If you're looking at the E mini of the 120 minute chart, earlier it looked like, uh oh, Look at that nice move. That's what I want to see. The way the stochastic is running from single digits to the twin to the teens, and now right through 20% into the 35%. MACD crosses positive. That looked fantastic for leg A. And then what happened? It just gave back too much. Why is it giving back so much? Because this is a mixed market, and the 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 stocks in the Nasdaq that are pulling it down are probably the ones that are also in. The uh, e, in the S and P or the E minis. So this is a real problem. That this is way too deep a candle for today. By the end of the day, if there's another rally and the down instead of being down 57 and the S and P cash is down 12 and the E mini itself is down 12, if there is a reversal, that would be very good. I, I meant to say to my subscribers, I said it overall, but I really meant to say it. I had it originally written after uh, 1:30. If after 130 the Dow is up 20 points or more and the S&P is up about three points, three to four points, that says good. Now you can rally into the close and have a nice Tuesday. I, I, I just said anytime it goes positive, and that was silly because uh, it, I needed to follow through. I needed the whole day to be working to the upside, not just early morning and then give it back. So it's a whole day process into Tuesday. So let me say this. So the question about the 300, uh, the 300, let me if I can find it right here. The 300 minute, that's a five hour, E-mini says, this candle still is not, not a, it's a, it's not a great candle. It's just not a horrible candle. It will be if it takes out the low of the bar, previous bar, why, why is that moving? Oh, if it takes out the bar of, uh, from nine o'clock, and it takes out 27.34, uh, that's going to be very ugly. But if it can just steadily now start to move up and then close at 1.30 to 2 o'clock, it's over 27.53, the 14-period moving average of the 300-minute. And then at uh, 3 o'clock, you're suddenly seeing it above 27.62, the 9-period moving average. Finally, and then you want to see the TLT. And let me do it on the same chart. See the little doji that's forming here in the, in the 300 it's the same candle that we were looking at in the uh, daily chart. You want to see by tomorrow the markets are moving up, the futures are moving up, and you've got this little sucker right here pulling back, and the TLT trading 131.84 starts to trade under 131.25. That will say to me, oh, maybe now we can have a little bit of a, a rally. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> so we did that. Let me just go back to this ESM19. This is the... Uh, Two-minute chart right here. Oh, now's the leg B. Good. I knew that when I closed at one particular platform out, I would have wanted to put a trade in, but I said, nah, during the show, I won't be doing any trading. But that's a pity. I think that this is this is what I'm looking at now is starting to build into something a little more positive. I, I need to follow through. Or oh, We're at 10 minutes to 1. We need to see this whole follow-through going for the next hour. And then pullbacks are very minor, 27.42.75 in the E-mini right now. You want to see 27.39 hold and then go to 27.45 or 47. Nice steady move. That's the way I would like it. Quiet. I want a quiet rally today. I don't want anything spectacular because then everybody's going to get too bullish too quickly. Just kind of suddenly close at the upside. And then even overnight, let's see if we've got anything. I don't think we've got anything in my Japan move trend gauge today. Uh, what does it say? No, 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 nothing to see here, folks. So, yeah, so it'll be nice if it's very quiet and then kind of mixed in the morning tomorrow. And then, boom, in the afternoon, suddenly it's up very nicely. I'd say that that's good. That's what I'd like to see, a very a stealth counter trend bounce. That's, that's, that's to articulate it. Now, question, Trump tariffs are disruptor of Chapman wave, usher in bear market in stocks. You know, I did a lot of work over the weekend uh, just going through as critically as I could all the different scenarios. And the scenario that I keep coming up with for subscribers is I showed you that particular chart. I showed you in the webinar last, uh, last webinar, the webinar I've got coming up on the 12th of this month in another, another two Wednesdays time. Um, that's going to be 
on the tide. I'm looking at the tide. It's so important that you can identify uh, the big picture. Let me show you what I mean about the big picture. The big picture says that we've got a break coming up right now. So let me just get everything ready. When we come back, I'll talk to you about the big picture. Will, that, will I be correct? I don't know. But all I'm saying is, I think the bigger picture says that this very quiet, megable market with a lot of noise of negativity is going to reverse and become very positive at some point. I'll be back. Are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So Dow's down 50. So this, this is my outlook. That this move uh, from 21,700 in the Dow to 26,695, <clears throat> as opposed to going all the way to a new high above 26,951, the October high, was suggesting to me that there should be a leg D. The pullback has been deeper than I anticipated. I can't say that completely. I had said that the 25,000 area should be tested, and we've gone down 25,000 area to 24,800. We've gone a tad lower than that. Uh, this is kind of the area I'm looking at. It could still go lower. And that the, the chart that I showed subscribers over the weekend, which is the chart that I'll be talking about in great detail in my upcoming webinar, uh, it's not my template. It's my. It's just. It's kind of my thinking more than a template in price. But the chart formations have been excellent so far. So that's kind of something that I'm using. But it's more importantly what I'm looking at just socioeconomically. I don't think with all this. Uh, all the bad news that's out, the fact that we've had job growth 
That's the dichotomy. That's the aspect that is way more important than many of the others. But there's no question we haven't had tariffs for a long time. It's going to be an issue. Okay, let me just show you something. NK, the Nikkei. Nikkei takes a real dive and it's down again. It was up 15 points right now in the futures. But it has got the same pattern. Look at this. In the in Nikkei monthly, look at this chart on the right. And now show me if there's any difference between this particular chart right here. Hey, could you tell the difference? This is the Russell 2000. The monthly chart looks the same thing, right? It's very much the same pattern. If I'm looking at um, uh, dollar, DE, DOW, this is Germany. This is the Dow German DAX. Big pullback, but still way off the lows that were made in December. And also has that same look, high out there in 2018, a low December of 2018. Big rally, but not big enough. So these are things I'll be talking about. I'll do more of it tomorrow. Let's see if the Dow's are able to close nicely higher today and a nice move tomorrow. I think that's the counter chain bounce that I'm looking for. I hope I'm correct. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Stay tuned for Steve. Stay tuned for Dave. Stay tuned for Tom O'Brien. I'll be back tomorrow. Check out my opening call. We've had some really nice trades, some nice, uh, some nice profits made. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day.